I should add you as a friend, Legion. I'm gonna do that. But... Why, hello everybody! Hi! <laughs> Welcome to VR MMO Church. It is really, really great to see you all day today um thank you matthew for for coming matthew for sure is new here so everybody make sure you welcome matthew um hey, connor i think no connor's been around but anyway um especially warm welcome if you are new here to vr mmo church um come on in blue good to see you glad you made it Woo -woo. all right so before we get started and we're going to be having today's sermon um shared with us by pastor bismick uh just have a few announcements and things to to go over um uh, uh, first and foremost if anybody is coming to you and sharing any hateful hurtful things um maybe they're trying to to cram their theology down your throat if anybody is being aggressive hurtful or harmful it's very important that you mute lock um and let us know please uh, so we can do our best to try and protect um the space that should be a space safe. So, so mute lock um, and report to us. And the other thing is, is you may be really tempted, like maybe you can handle the aggression. Maybe you can handle the back and forth, forth of the battle of who's right and this and that. Um, but when it's a hurtful, horrible thing, uh, maybe others around you are also hearing this and, and maybe they can't handle it. Maybe it's, really hard on them so encourage you not to engage um discussing theology wonderful hurtful harmful aggressive attacks not okay um so please don't engage if it's like that and just mute block and report so thank you thank you um i don't think we're gonna have that problem today oh and we're gonna pray about that right now before we get into um our announcements in today's sermons thank you everybody Amen. Father God, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this new and wonderful day. Thank you for each and every person that you have um, led to our doors that, that we may um, benefit from, from knowing them uh, just as much as they benefit from, from what we share here at VR MMO Church. And Lord, we ask um, protection um, in every way, um, mind, body, spirit, um, for all of your children. And and especially here, right here, right now, that, that this time that people have carved out to come to to, to know you more, Lord, that, that this be a place of um, a joy, a place of peace, um, and just a place that, that is free from the, the, the world um, as we know it, and, and that we can be just in your presence. And, and Lord, just help us to, 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 to do that. And Lord, we ask that you open our minds and our hearts as we, as we get into today's scripture. Um, Lord, we ask that you speak through Pastor Bismick, that there may be something he's not planned, but something that the, the, even one of us needs to know. Lord, I ask you to speak through him. Um, and you hear us to hear the message that, that you have for us individually. Um, we just thank you for all of these things and so much more. And you're just amazing and wonderful and powerful and loving name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Amen. So, ah, hey, Wolf, I was wondering where that was. Hey, Wolf, what are you? Are you eating your hot dog? What's happening? I normally hear you say amen. I just got to work, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, just real quick, if you're new here, we are so much more than just a Sunday service uh, church. Um, we, this church that we are, um, we, uh, the community, the people, we make the church, not the not the service, not the building, not the whatever, the server. Um, but but each and every one of us is 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 the church, and we have different activities throughout the week. Um, I really encourage you to tap into those uh there's nothing more encouraging that surrounding yourself by others um who are uh thank you to the heart you instill in us lord jesus also encouragers i mean it's amazing what we can do in each other's lives when we join together and just spend time shooting zombies maybe doing a bible study spending time in prayer we do all these things um and just spending time together so in 
order to do so, in order to find out where and when and how to do these things, uh, we'll uh, need you to join our Discord server. And in our Discord server, you'll find all that so much more. Um, prayer needs around the clock. We're a global church. Please um, let us know your prayer needs in the Discord server. We have a wonderful um, community that will pray for you. But how do you get to Discord? Well, vrchurch.org or mmo.church. We have these two websites, vrchurch.org, mmo.church. Both of these will tell you more about um, the the pastors, the leaders, uh, the church as a whole. Um, there's the drop-down menu link to join our Discord server. And there's also a section to donate because we are a real church and have um, wonderful desires to, to, to share God's love in so many ways and so many more places and um, wonderful things. Um, but even though we're a virtual church, finances are still are, are still a needed thing and so um if that is in your heart you can you can do so on, on one of our two websites vrchurch.org mmo.church um without further ado let's get i almost said let's get matthew up <laughs> pastor bismick not matthew <laughs> pastor bismick up here to share the book of matthew 24 part two um where is where is that rascally rabbit Right behind you, what is, Pastor Oh, Ina. he is so <laughs> <Hello>. sneaky. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Bismick. <laughs> Hello. Uh, by the way, I showed the, the websites there um, most of the time at the last slide. Um, there you can see where you can visit our beautiful website. Yeah. Hello. Thanks. You. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you, Pastor Lina, for introducing me. And now we are getting right into the sermon. Let me get you into the right button here i think it is exactly this yeah we're going through the book of matthew through the gospel of matthew and we're going through chapter 24 and because that chapter is that long we started split it up um and last time last week you heard part one and now you will hear part two and this is a very wow it's a very very apocalyptic part uh, i have to say this is not my favorite bible chapter i want to preach about because i have more questions than answers to it and um, i will leave you with more questions i think than answers yeah. but this is sometimes needed so um this faith we share is not all it's not all the time a, a faith of answers sometimes a faith of unanswered questions and this is um completely normal and everybody who says no 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 i have the right answer so you know the whole bible is so open up for me everything concludes so perfectly together there are no contradictions no uh, not on the first side um yeah please doubt those persons um i think um there is something some wisdom lacking so this is very important and sometimes it's those people to those persons those people um they have so much doubt inside their heart they, they compensate their doubt. Instead of talking this out with the Lord, they, they compensate their doubt uh, through hardcore, biblicistical point of views. Do you know those kind of people? Maybe those biblicistical people you know. They, they, they have all the, the answers in the Bible. The Bible is complete, completely open to them. They, have, they know everything, and they have all the wisdom in their mind, and they exactly know that this and that uh, happened then and then um it's not it's not wrong to know something about the bible but sometimes it's a compensation of doubt and then it becomes fan it, then it surely becomes fanatism because when your biblicistical point of view is born out of skepticism then every person who skepticizes something in the bible is attacking you by the root he's at attacking you in your doubt and uh, you have to not only defend god not only defend the bible but also have to defend your faith and this is not creating um a, a good a good um religious opinion this is not creating a good relationship with jesus christ and this is not creating a good conversation with non-christians be assured about that this is creating an atmosphere of narrowness and there are churches built in this atmosphere of narrowness. And if you come out of those churches, you surely need one thing first to deconstruct. And many people lose their faith in the, this process. So let us not create narrow churches. Let us not create narrow churches of all the answers. So let us be open.
open to questions. Okay, this was a good. I haven't prepared this, but maybe this was for somebody of you. This is, uh, has business make. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you have some good sermons. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, but right now we come to some very apocalyptic stuff. So Jesus is gathering his disciples and on a hill and he says, okay, they, they ask him, what else were, what are the signs? Where do we recognize when you come back again? And then he shows us, then he tells us, and especially his disciples, um, who will, who will, um, uh, what will, what will happen and what will be the, the side effects of his coming will it just be he's back again and everything will get back to normal that would be horrible um it would be not horrible for people that have so many advantages here on this world yeah there are people that are that are in love with this world because they get so they gain so many advantages of it um uh, and especially if they are not the oppressed ones but especially if they are the oppressor the oppressor of this world, they do not like this story. They do not like the story. But for the oppressed ones, for those ones that mourn, for the ones that say we, this world has to end, the structure of this world, the power structures of this world, the the whole the whole uh, problem of death, death in my family, death in my friend, in my friendships. This all has to end. This world has to end. So uh, for those people, this is a message of hope. This message of hope sometimes sounds like a metal song. So let's go on. Yeah, uh, it, my my Eddie uh, avatar fits perfectly to what I've said. Immediately after the persecution of those uh, of the faithful of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give light, and the stars will seem to fall from the heavens, and the powers overshadowing the earth will be convulsed. So this. So those are first the side effects. So the, this world will not going to end with a little, so but it will end with with chaos and and to to say, I think I've I got a maybe an answer right now. Maybe it is not an answer, but maybe it is. So this world, is, the problem of this world is chaos. So the power structures of this world and the structure of death we have in this world, it is all creating more and more chaos. And more, the, putting the world more and more away from a godly order, or uh, understood in a way of uh, hold on to the law, but order in the way of the order of love. So this world is getting more far and far away from it. So of course, the end of this world will be the high peak of the the main, main structure of this world, and the main structure of this world is chaos. So how could the world end not into complete chaos after? creating so much chaos out of it yeah, this is new, new. <laughs> this is uh, maybe it's wrong but this is something i got right right now warm, warm and hot now for for you so maybe the structure of this world is chaos that much that it has to end with uh its high is its highest symbol of structure named chaos okay um and that and, okay and at last the signal of my coming will appear in heaven and there will be deep mourning all around the world. And the nations of the world will see me arrive in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So those, these are things we are going to see. So this is very interesting. This apocalyptic point of view Jesus has right now, right here, um, is something that we can believe that we experience. We're going to experience. Um, and I shall send forth my angels with the sound of a mighty trumpet blast, and they shall gather my chosen ones from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. So all those people that stay true with Jesus Christ will be gathered. There will, there will be one big church at the end without any theological nonsense discussion. Now learn a lesson from the fig, uh, from, from the fig tree. When her branch is tender and the leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is almost here. So, um, sometimes in the Old Testament, the symbol fig tree is for uh, use for Israel. So some Christians believe, yeah, this is all happening since 1948, since Israel was uh, then re-established. This can be, this can also, this can also, uh, this, it's also possible that this is not true. So, there's 
some question from me, not to you, but to God. I don't know. Um, so the victory could stand for Israel. And then this could mean that we are now living in the end times because victory is now in the summer because Israel is now a state, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's also, also possible that not. So some um, S sometimes in the Bible, very mystical. And it's okay that way. Just so, when you see all these things beginning to happen, you can know that my return is near, even at the doors. Then at last, this age will come to its close. So this closement of this earth, again, for those people that are oppressed here, that have enough uh, for those, this is a sound and a symbol and a, a date of hope. So, uh, by the way, um, I have to inform you, I'm here on my Oculus Quest. Normally I'm on my Valve Index, but I'm now in my library and therefore uh, I have no uh, uh, Valve Index around. So hopefully everything's working well and there's no internet problems. Like Blah blah. So just so that you know, so heaven and earth will disappear, but my words remain forever. But no one knows the date and hour when the end will be. Not even the angels, nor even God's son. Only the Father knows. That is a big, big, big deal for Muslims. <laughs> so I respect Muslims. Yeah, I respect Islam. I don't believe in Islam, but I respect Islam. But in the interreligious dialogue between our two religions, uh, between our two to religions. Um, this is a very, very interesting part because some Muslims will always point out to this very verse because they really believe in monotheism. So we Christians also believe in monotheism. We also believe in one God, monotheism, one God. But we also believe in Trinity. We believe that there is God and God is the Father. God is the Son. God is the Holy Spirit. We don't think that those three are three gods. But we believe that God is um, all those three things. And there is some mystical truth in it. We, there, there is something I cannot explain. And that is completely okay. Because um, this, um, this theological uh, construct of the Trinity, so we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it helps me to pray. So therefore, I use it. So because when I pray to the Father, I don't think, oh no, the, the poor son, I have prayed to him in a long while. No, I don't think so, because of Trinity. But some Muslims will say, hey, but, but how can this be? Uh, how can you not be polytheistic when the Father is that separated by the Son that the Son knows something not the Father knows? You know, you understand what I mean? So yeah, there is something that I cannot understand. So where, where I would say, hey, why should the Father know something the Son doesn't? Yeah, there are some answers to it. Yeah, maybe it is just Jesus here down on earth. And maybe Jesus back then in heaven was informed by the Father when this date is. So, um, yeah, could all could all be. But it doesn't matter for me that much. I know that there is a date when this world will end and the Father knows it. So that's everything. That's a, even everything I need to know. So, And I'm not fearful that I'm a polytheist, but that I would be polytheistic just because I believe in Trinity. But that is, in the interreligious, this dialogue is, this is a big kind of a deal. So, the world will be at ease, banquets and parties and weddings, just as it was in Noah's time before the sudden coming of the flood. People wouldn't believe that was going to happen until the flood actually arrived and took them all away, so shall my coming be. Um, this is an obvious contradiction, because at one time, Jesus says, hey, there will be some signs where you can see the end will come. Then he says, hey, but there will be some signs where everything will stay the same. So it's not wrong to marry. It's not wrong to party. Jesus partied a lot. Um, in, uh, in a good sense, in a good way. I didn't do drugs, something like this. Um, but there is, um, but Jesus wanted to say with this sentence that you cannot say when the when the end comes so you cannot say in the year 2012 the end will come or something like this um yeah this is this is stupid um and st still some christian sects try to find them some dates when jesus christ will come back again and uh, i don't know why um but again um just right before jesus comes back again we won't would have the opportunity to exactly point out Right now he's coming. So because there will be some normal life going on. Yeah, that's, that expresses quite well.
So, two men will be working together in the fields and one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be going about their household tasks, one will be taken, the other left. So, yeah, there will be a big separation because some of those people, when Jesus Christ comes back again, will go to, um, will be gathered with the faithful and some, some will not. And it will not be um, the family that will gather you. There will not be the family will, uh, that will save you. Because just because your brother is saved, it doesn't mean you are saved. So this is something that I, that I could read out of this here. And some Christians try to make out of these verses uh, some theology that there will be a quick beaming up into heaven. Maybe some of you have known this. There are even some, some Christian movies. There are even some Christian movies with Hollywood actors um, expressing this theology that there will be a big rapture. There will be a date where all the taxi drivers and the... Um, the uh, um, the, the, the plane drivers, drivers uh, will be beamed up, the, all the Christian ones, and then there will be big ca catastrophes on Earth uh, because, uh, all those, because of all those, those Christians um, beamed up into heaven. So, um, yeah, this is something you could read out of those verses, but it's not highly recommended. So it's, um, there are some, so there are many, especially American Christians believing this, and there are some evangelical German Christians believing this. I especially, I especially believed this when I was uh, in my teenage years because my church believed so. Hey, I was in school and I was right before of, of, uh, of an exam, and I was like, hey, maybe the rapture is happening right now. No, but maybe yet, maybe now. <laughs> I was in, in a big expectation of this rapture, and maybe some of you too. I don't want to say. Hey, this is so bad. You should leave this theology alone. Uh, you should 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 leave this uh, theological concept. Um, but I want to say this theological concept. It has not that much proof that it claims to have. And don't be so much convinced of it just because of uh, Hollywood actors are doing film stuff about it. Maybe this is yeah. Good. Say so. Be prepared. So now we come to the last. Now we come to the last verses. And those seem to be the most difficult, so because Jesus putting, uh, it seems to now putting some pressure on us. So, so be prepared, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Just as a man can prevent trouble from thieves by keeping watch from for them, so you can avoid trouble by always be ready for my unannounced return. So always be ready means yeah, there is no time. For you to say to to just um, not invest in, in, investigate investigate no invest to, there's not a time for you where it is okay to not invest into your faith not invest into your moral progresses not to invest in uh, your relationship with the father that will change how you love change how you be here on earth change how much you want how much you want to build up the kingdom of jesus christ so this there is no time where it is where it is not right to do this so this is because um especially there were some christians that, that try to get baptized very late so they uh, um, have uh, fun in life so even constantine the great the person that made uh christianity the um no that uh to, to Tolerated uh, Christianity, he then converted to Christianity uh, in the last moments of his life. So, so the legend tells us. Okay. Um, so, are you wise and faithful servant of the Lord? Have I given you the task of managing my household to feed my children day by day? Blessings on you if I return and find. Sorry there, it seems to have frozen up on me. Nope, the world completely crashed on me. I'll get right back into it.
Just give me a quick moment here. My computer doesn't really like VR chat, so this happens from time to time, but I was really hoping it wouldn't happen today. Judging by some messages I'm receiving, um, it appears as though a lot of people have crashed. So. I guess Bismuth himself crashed and Olina did as well. Just getting back into the world now here. So I can take take the error cat away. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Very important that you listen to this sermon uh, yeah. unt until the end, because it now seems that Jesus Christ is putting pressure on us. Um, so and and that uh, and that we therefore uh, live a moral life the, uh, because of because we are then fearful that Jesus Christ will come back again. So he's, he will come back again. We don't know how and we don't know when. So therefore, better let's let us live moral. Uh, life. So this is but this is not the point in the gospel. So in the if we look at the whole gospel, it is all about forgiveness. It is all about building up the kingdom with the power of Holy Spirit. So therefore, to be one of those guys, you need 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 you, but you just need the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is the very important point. So not because you're fearful that the Lord may come soon back again, but you're trustful that the Lord will give you the strength to build up his kingdom like this. And it's not only feed, uh, it is, 
Uh, it is not only um, to feed my children there, but it's not only uh, giving giving sermons and spreading the gospel. It's also meant in the social way. I'm convinced. So there, it's also meant in the way that um, there are children, maybe or maybe poor people um, that we literally support. So that is very important because I read many sermons; they just spiritualize this. And I don't think that Jesus spiritualized that much. He was a very very imminent person he his help was always helping not only spiritual but in the whole human human he, he that appeared to him so you understand so it wasn't not like hey help me feed me spiritually it was always yeah spiritually but i also heal you i also help you so so but if you are evil so to all of us that are, are evil and say to yourself, my Lord won't be coming for a while, and begin oppressing your fellow servants, parting and getting drunk, your Lord will arrive unannounced and unexpected. So this is a bad message for all, all the hypocrites. And this is a this is this makes me sometimes nervous when I think of uh when I don't live that pure. Yeah, there's there are aspects of my life where I say, Hey, I definitely need more Jesus in. So I definitely need um journeys of the spirit inside of my heart to change me here yeah that's i i con uh, i confess that's the case there are people that are evil from within and they don't even want this change to happen but if you're evil and say to yourself my want will be coming for a while so maybe uh, maybe uh, uh in the church history uh priests that got on the side of the op not of the oppressed ones but on the oppressors and did many, many bad things to children, to Muslims, to, to other people in the crusades, or maybe until now, church fathers or evangelical church fathers that harm other people, and they, and they don't care um, because they're evil from within. They shall know that there will be an end of their hypocritism, if that's an English word, I don't know, hypocrisy, so <laughs> hypocrisy. Um, and they shall know your Lord will arrive unannounced and un expect it and that is again it is not a bad message for those that are oppressed by them it's a best bad message for the oppressed or for the oppressors so and severely whip you and send you off to the judgment of the hypocrites there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and imagine people of jerusalem in the year 1099 when the crusades Crusade um, knights uh, got inside the city and slaughtered 50,000 people, men, women, and children. Imagine then them uh, coming back to life again when Jesus Christ comes and all the dead people come to life back again. And they see all those hypocritical priests gnashing their teeth and weeping. So they will then see our God is still a God full of judgment and not. not in opposite of his love, but as a part of his love. Yeah. So let us pray. Holy Spirit and Jesus and Father. No, just kidding. So, um, Jesus, we still need... I, I still have no, not every answer to this. And I still, uh, when I read those verses, it doesn't comfort me that much. Because um, uh, so I sometimes fear maybe to be more one of the oppressors than the oppressors pressed ones so please um holy spirit uh can mm, um help us to to see where there are dark and evil parts of our soul to to be transformed then in a transformation that only you can give but that you are able to give so please make us um make us open wide uh open our hearts wide for this for this uh transformation so that we that, so that the desire to build up your kingdom, to feed your children, will grow and grow and grow and grow. So that when you come back again, you will see us feed the children, build up your kingdom, spread the gospel. But also, not only by words, but also by works. Um, but not with just fear of judgment, but with, with um, your love in our hearts that, may, that, that help us to achieve this. Awakenness for your arrival easily. Yeah. This awakenness for your arrival 
people you desire us to have. It is easy for those that are led by the Spirit. So please help us to get into this intimacy with you, to, to be able to, tr to, to train our ears, um, to listen more, to obey more, to this mighty spirit that already dwells in all of those people that said yes to you. Holy Spirit, we need your guidance. We need your guidance. And this world needs to end. And before that, it needs, it needs kill the kingdom of God builders. Yeah. So that's it. Amen. Amen.